So this one ought to be good. Uh, I made a post on my community tab asking you guys to uh, drop some ideas for the next viewer led video. Well, we were doing these pretty consistently there a few months back. Seems like the holiday busy season got in the way of that. But I wanna bring that back now that things are starting to slow down again. So you guys got to dictate the entire video from the topic itself to the fragrances that are in it. And of course, for this one here, we've got 10 fragrances that ended up being a waste of time or money for you to purchase because they straight up suck. So yeah, these fragrances suck. Basically how this works, if you guys are new to the channel, is you leave your comment below on the community post and then you upvote the comments that you agree with. Now, there ends up being a lot of comments, so I don't get upset if there's repeats. I don't uh, you know, I don't expect everyone to go through and look through the entire thing before they comment. Repeats are going to happen, but if you do see uh, the fragrance that you want to feature or you agree with multiple of them, upvote the comments that you agree with. That really helps to make this video easier to put together. So what we have is uh, number one through ten, number one being the highest voted and number ten being the lowest voted. And basically from top down one to 10, it goes from the most amount of a waste of money because they suck to the least, if that makes sense. I mean, you guys all understand it. So we'll just go ahead and run through this one. And we're gonna start off at number 10. This one ended up having four votes by the time I finalized this. Uh, it's Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Eau de Toilette. So I actually agree with this one. This is surprisingly, it's one of the few that I agree with. A lot of these in here are really close to me, but this one here is one that I've been pretty vocal about not really caring for. The Eau de Parfum, I think, is substantially better, and for anyone out there who's wanting to get into the night vision line, go with the EDP, don't even think twice. Uh, the EDT is just kind of muddled. It's a little bit of a waste. It, it's kind of uninspired, and it just doesn't do a whole lot to me. At number nine, we have Dior Ohm Sport up next. And this is going to be uh, the 2021. Uh, they didn't specify. I guess they could be talking about this new one here. Maybe they just bought it and paid retail. Maybe they're talking about the 2017, which was, of course, available from 2017 until now. Uh, I'm not for sure. It's hard to say for sure, but... Uh, Dior Homme Sport. Now it's important to note that all of them do smell different, 2008, 2012, 2017, 2021, but uh, you know, it could go either way, I guess. So I actually really like the 2021 version. I think this one is miles better than the 2017. Uh, I actually would probably say that the 2017 is a waste of money, kind of sucks to me. Uh, the 2021 is miles better. Again, not sure what the commenter was referring to, if anything here, um, but you know, for what it's worth, I think the 20, uh, 2021 version here is really nice. At number eight, we have uh, one of the two niche fragrances that found their way into this video, Amouage Interlude Black Iris. So a little bit of a surprise to me uh, because if anything, I would expect the original interlude to be in here because Black Iris is a, a nice kind of tamed down version. It's more vanillic, uh, has a nice creamy iris. It's a little bit more smooth. It's less in your, in your face and super powerful and strong and kind of overbearing. Now it is still a strong, heavy performer, but talking scent character here. Uh, the original interlude is far more challenging to me. Uh, that being said, it ended up getting 10 votes. So it's kind of where it lands here. Uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of it, but this is one of those fragrances where not everyone's gonna like it. You really have to do your due diligence here and either sample it first or be very sure that you like the main notes listed in here and make sure it's consistent with other fragrances that you may pick up. It, it should go without saying, but I feel like some people can't grasp the fact that if you go from all freshies and aquatics and you jump into something like this, you're probably not gonna like it right off the bat. And number seven with 13 votes, we have Yope Ohm Ice. Uh, so this one, I, I believe, was commented a couple of times, uh, and again, 13 votes is, is pretty solid there. Um, it just doesn't work for people, and it's another one where I understand it. You know, this is the perfect example of a fragrance brand doing something different, trying to do something unique. You know, it, it has the name Ice, it has a light blue coloration, you're going to think generic and basic right off the bat, uh, but they're kind of branching out, using some plums, some sweeter notes here. 
to make a, a different take on a, a summertime flanker. And so why I bring this up is because people always claim that they want something new and different from designer brands. And when we get that, they're still poorly received. It's kind of uh, the classic example of you just can't please everybody, right? Some people still want basic generic releases being pumped out. Some people don't, but yet when something new comes out, it still kind of gets dumped on. So this one is another one where you got to do your research first, check the note breakdown, watch some reviews. Uh, a lot of the fragrance enthusiasts and a lot of the fragrance channels will probably like this one because we've smelled so many things, we want something different. For the average consumer, it may not be for everybody. And number six, this one actually surprised me a little bit and it ended up with 14 votes. Um, so we've got Azaro Wanted by Night. So you guys know it's got cinnamon, fruity notes, tobacco. It's their nighttime, spicy, warm take on the original Wanted. I'm a big fan of it. You guys know that it was featured hard this past winter on my channel and on a lot of channels, to be honest. So I can understand where people are just straight up sick of it. And from that regard, I understand completely. But like I've said before, out of all of the Wanteds, this would be the one for me. I would still probably take this one over the Most Wanted. Now I haven't smelled um, the Most Wanted Parfum yet, um, the newest release. I haven't been able to get my hands on it, so I don't know for certain. Maybe I would like that one more. Maybe it would become my favorite. But as it sits out of the entire line, uh, Wanted by Night's my favorite. Now it's also good to note that the line itself is still gonna be on the more basic side, uh, very easy to pull off, very mass pleasing, that sort of thing. Um, and it's gonna have some of that kind of bubble gummy sweetness hidden in the base of this one. But it is masked pretty well with the warm spicy notes, the tobacco, all of that stuff. For the price, performance, quality, compliments, uh, for a lot of people it works well, but for some of course it's not. Breaking into the top five, we have Versace Eros Eau de Toilette. So, Kind of surprised me a little bit as well because how many votes did we get? 17 on Eros EDT. That's pretty rough, man. Uh, I guess it shouldn't surprise me because I, I see it all the time, but I also see so much praise for the Eros fragrances even still. So it kind of just is in the middle there. You never know. It's going to work for some. It's not going to work for others. Um, for me, the EDT is not one that I would buy anymore, really. Uh, I have a giant 200 milliliter bottle, uh, so I'm always gonna have Eros EDT. This is not gonna be used up by me. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Um, but these days, uh, I would recommend you uh, to purchase the Parfum first, maybe the EDP second, and maybe Flame third, and not worry about the EDT unless you are a diehard collector. Because it, I think the new flankers just bring more to the table here. So if you're picking up Eros EDT these days, uh, you may find yourself being a bit disappointed. I think they've come a long way with the DNA, and so I would recommend Parfum, EDP, Flame, maybe not this one anymore. Of course, I'm not saying that Eros EDT is bad because that's going to get taken completely out of context. I'm just saying as a new purchaser to the Eros line, if you don't own any of them, start with the Parfum or something. And number four with 20 votes, another one that uh, shocked me. And uh, if you added up all of the duplicate comments, it could be close to 25, 26 votes. I saw this one commented a few times, so a lot of hate for this one here. It's F Black Pour Ohm by Ferragamo. Yeah, believe it or not, this one here got trashed. It got slaughtered in this video. Uh, I like it a lot. You know, I've said that before, I've featured it before. It was one of the kind of, not necessarily one of the first fragrances that I got when I was starting out, but it was kind of still uh, something that I got in the very beginning stages of my collection because it was cheap, still is cheap, 20 to $30. Um, it, it's always been a good performer for me. You know, it's got lavender, it's got tonka bean pepper, it's very peppery. Some people say it smells like uh, diapers <laughs> uh, just because of the powdery nature of it. Some people also say that it smells like Lana Weed alone. I think both of those are a stretch, but everyone's gonna interpret this differently. For me, it's just a peppery, masculine scent that works really well in, in brisk winters here. You know, we're uh, kind of uh, in the area where winter can be not bad on some days, but then it can be absolutely brutal. I'm talking like in the negatives, especially with wind chill. And this is one of those things I would pick up uh, during that time, especially for the price. But it's not gonna be for everyone and I can understand that. And I think I've also said that before, maybe do your due diligence on this one. 
Number three, another one that did not come as a surprise. This one has 23 votes, I think was commented a few times as well. Bentley for Men Intense, so you guys know it has the uh, boozy accord, it's got the incense. Um, it's smoky, people say it smells like a church, people say it smells like their grandpa. This is another example of a designer brand doing something different, but yet still isn't well received because of the maturity of it. I'm 22 and I will rock this one with no shame at all. I mean, I really do not care. And I've gotten compliments wearing this one, believe it or not. It's a masculine scent. It's a very luxe and rich and uh, established smelling fragrance. You know, people love it, believe it or not. Uh, it's just kind of getting past that mental barrier of, oh, I smell like a grandpa. Uh, if you're dressed not looking like a grandpa and you're wearing this, chances are people aren't gonna think you smell like a grandpa. You know, it's all about how you're holding yourself and as long as you're doing everything right and not dressing like a slob and having, uh, you know, your grooming all out of whack and, and just having low confidence, if you rock this stuff as a young man and you're, you're really confident about it, it's going to do well for you. You know, it's got great quality. It's got a great price point of about $30. Performance is also monstrous. Uh, for the price, it's one of the better fragrances out there on the market if you're after something different. So the number two fragrance that landed here with 24 votes, I actually do not own a bottle of anymore. It's Mont Blanc Individuel. Uh, so for me, I, I agree actually with this one. There's a reason why I don't own a bottle anymore. It's not because I wore through the entire thing and I just haven't bought a new one yet. Uh, Individuel has never really done it for me either. Uh, this is of course the prime example of Creed, the luxury brand, niche brand, copying Mont Blanc, which is, of course, a, a designer brand. The fragrances typically discount out to around anywhere from $30 to $40. So you can understand it's not really a great look for Creed when they blatantly rip off a fragrance from a designer brand and then mark it way up. Of course, the fragrance I'm talking about is Creed's Original Centaur, which is what, you know, nearing 500 at retail on discounters, maybe 300-ish, somewhere around in there. Again, the Mont Blanc, it's... Uh, 30, something like that. So it's not a good look. And, uh, you know, between the two, which one would I pick? I would pick the Creed. Uh, I'm not going off of ethics here. I'm not going off of, oh, cloning and copying is bad. I'm going off of quality and scent. I would take the Creed. The Mont Blanc for me is just too synthetic. It, it was one that always kind of gave me a bit of a headache. It was very harsh, very strong. Good performer, so it does have that going for it. But for me, it never worked. Just like all of these here didn't work for a lot of you guys. Just kind of how it landed. Uh, I'm not saying that Creed is awesome for copying it and then improving upon the quality. That's uh, I would hope that would happen if they're going to copy it, uh, bump up the quality because they're charging through the roof. That's kind of how it landed. So for uh, a lot of you guys, I agree with you on individual. And speaking of Creed, this is awesome. And number one with 25 votes, I'm sure it was commented a few times. We could probably say it has 30, 35 votes by this point, maybe 40. Uh, good old Creed Aventus, the king of men's fragrances. I know that just irks people, that pisses people off. There's already going to be about 10 hate comments helping to boost the overall engagement of this video on calling this the king. Um, you know, it, it made it to number one. Normally, it's a good thing. In this instance, it's kind of a bad thing, I guess, but it doesn't affect the fragrance anyway. Uh, people really do believe that Aventus is a waste of money. Um, and I'll be the first one to admit, it is a lot of money. Even at discounters, the average normal person does not need to be spending this amount of money on a fragrance when there are alternatives out there that I've also, by the way, featured many times on the channel. Explore, Mercedes-Benz Select, Parfums Vintage, most of the fragrances. Those are going to be a little bit more expensive, though. Our Moff Club de Nuit Intense Man, uh, going to be a whole bunch of other clones from other little oil clone houses out there. Uh, there are other ways to go about it. If you have the disposable income and you want the premium product, then Aventus, of course, would be the way to go. Most people don't want to swing that, and I don't blame you one bit. Uh, if I didn't have this channel, I wouldn't either. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of where it is. Um, for a lot of people out there, going and springing for the premium product is not going to be worth it. 
same deal as uh, just your everyday guy going out and spending his a good chunk of his life savings on a, a newer Rolex or something. It's not necessary. There are watches out there that look the same as a Rolex, clones, uh, homages, homages, however you say that word, watch people are gonna get pissed now too. Um, th there are other options out there or just other options from brands like Seiko and Orient that aren't even trying to clone the Rolex but they're still good watches at a much more affordable price. It's the same deal here. Um, for me, it's a special fragrance. I own nearing 10 bottles of it for a reason and it's not because everyone else says it's good so now I all, all of a sudden like it. Uh, it's a personal fragrance for me. It's one that I will wear at home by myself just because I like the smell of it, kind of how it is. If that how it is for you, then that's awesome. But if it's not, that's cool too. And you're actually saving yourself a lot of money. So that's awesome too. All right, you guys, there you go. 10 fragrances that were a waste of time because they suck. This was actually pretty fun because uh, usually I don't make videos on fragrances that straight up suck um, because a lot of my fragrances are actually really good. Um, but, you know, these here did not work out for you guys. And uh, really for all of these, there's a, an understandable reason behind it. You guys don't need to go attack each other for your opinions on these because, look, I like all of these, but or at least for the most part, but I also understand it. Not going to be for everybody. This is a pretty, uh, pretty polarizing bunch here. Alright you guys, that's going to do it for me. I will provide links to these down below if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.